I'm Genesis from Being Crypto. I'm here with Stuart Popejoy. Uh, thank you so much for being here. I know that like, you're the CEO and founder of Cadena, so I'm really happy to have this interview here and it's to see in Cannes. So uh, we're going to talk about like the major announcement that Cadena had uh, two, two days ago, if I'm not wrong. So... Um, Cadena just launched a uh, chain web, chain web EBM. So I want to know why this is so important for the all the EBM builders. Uh, sure. So um, yeah. So we launched Testnet uh, two days ago uh, with five EBM chains. Um, it's it's a chance to bring uh, a very unique architecture uh, to the EBM world. Uh, Cadena launched in 2020 uh, with a proof of work. A scalable layer one blockchain running our native application layer called Pact, and uh, that has that's that's we've been running ever since then, and started with ten chains, scaled to twenty, and uh, it represents a unique scaling approach and philosophy, which says that instead of using a layer two, uh, you can just stay on our layer one but expand to multiple chains. So it's something that we think brings a really uh, unique value proposition to builders who want the simplicity of just a you know of a layer one deployment uh but without all the peril of uh high gas prices of congestion and uh the ability to scale your app essentially infinitely uh that's amazing really i know like uh you are one of the creators of the pack blockchain so i wonder like why my next question is like why also solidity Sure. Yeah. So we uh, we designed. Uh, I am the author of the Pack Smart Contract Language, which is the so called native application layer. Although it's important to note that on the EVM chains, Pact is not the native language. On the EVM chains, EVM is the native language. So or Solidity, uh, um, and everything is exactly the same on a given chain as you'd expect from any other EVM chain. Um, yeah. So the the reason is that. Um, you know, as we, uh, you know, moved forward in this journey after launch in 2020, uh, even though the advantages of PACT are, there's some very great advantages of working in PACT, um, the amount of community involvement, uh, tooling, and just general enthusiasm, and the, the entire developer experience that surrounds EVM and Ethereum is kind of unstoppable. So it's something where Although I think we benefited from being able to work in a different environment because it, it allowed us to consider new concepts because the way dApps scale across our chain is a little different than you would do with any other uh, any other blockchain. And that requires us to provide protocols that uh, make that effortless and uh, uh, cheap and, and 100% trustless and reliable. So, you know, we've been running since 2020 uh, without a single interruption in block production, um, which is more than any of our competitors can say. Um, and uh, so now as we come to EVM, uh, we benefit from being able to offer developers a much more mature ecosystem. Um, so that's the kind of thing that you can really do is when you developers have really responded, there's been a lot of excitement, a lot of desire to come take advantage of this uh, new protocol. And so it's really working out Great for Kirena and great for developers. That's amazing. Good to know that. Also, like I know, like uh, when in your talk, like you were offering the uh, true horizontal scaling. So I want to know, like, I mean, can you break down how yeah. like chain web, web chain web EVM uh, achieves that? Uh, maybe like giving us like some really hot topics about it. Yeah, sure. I mean, so the 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 hot topic, and it's you know, I think it's actually pretty well understood now, is that layer two as a scaling mechanism has a lot of problems, um, it, and it's mainly just that, um, and it, but for some people, I think it works out great. But you know, at you're either doing an app chain, and an app chain has its difficulties, you know, where you're having to run an entire L two yourself. Um, it's just more than like just doing an application, right? Um, and then there's just the fragmentation and complexity of the layer two ecosystem itself. So whereas with Cadena, what we've done is taken the, the foundation of proof of work, um, you know, which is still the most decentralized and secure uh, consensus algorithm. It's st basically unchallenged as far as that goes and simple too. And we've added the third piece to the so-called scalability trilemma, which is scalability and the way we do it is by having uh, all the chains act as oracles to each other 
It's actually something that Bitcoin proposed doing in 2014 uh, with a uh, architecture called Betacoin. And uh, Bitcoin thought it would be too hard to do, not because of the technical reasons, not because of performance. They actually thought it would make uh, doing forks and upgrades in the community harder. And in, fr in fact, we didn't know how that would go. It turns out that miners just treat it as a single blockchain and devs treat it as a single blockchain. So, but due to the fact that we have an architecture that allows that every chain doesn't have to wait for every other chain in the, the only, it only has to, any chain has to only wait for a small subset of chains to make progress. Uh, it means that we can continue to grow the network so that even though we're at 20 chains, testnet takes us to 25 chains with five new EVM chains. And, you know, and the plan for production is, you know, is certainly at least five, maybe 10 or 20 EVM chains, depending on how many deploy, because we can continually add them. Um, but in fact, there's no limit on how many chains we can add. And it, uh, ChainWeb has the unique property that as you add more chains, the network actually gets stronger and it doesn't require more hash power. So it actually counters the main problem people have with proof of work, which is that it's too much energy for not enough benefit. You know, and that's certainly the case with Bitcoin. But in the case of uh, Kadena, as more uh, builders, users, use cases come online, we can continue to make the network more efficient, uh, whether that takes us to 50 chains or 10,000. Yeah, that's, that sounds good. Actually, I really like the explanation. Uh, I was also thinking about maybe Bitcoin uh, not just being uh, really hard to work, but also like the price. But we can make more forks and everything. That's um, yeah, that's a that's a unique uh, vision about like uh, why not working on Bitcoin too. So um, I want to talk a little bit about your journey. Uh, you're building in JP Morgan, uh, the first blockchain infrastructure. Uh, now you launch Cadena. Well, not now for a long time ago. <laughs> so uh, what, sh what changed the most in how enterprises and devs think about blockchain infrastructure today? Uh, well, I mean, everything, of course. So depending on how far back you go. Uh, so when, when we were at JP Morgan, because uh, I met my co-founder there and we launched out of JP Morgan in 2016 as a private blockchain company, um, there's actually a ton of industry interest at the time but it more or less uh, faltered, and uh, the and most of the business use cases didn't succeed, with the notable exception of J.P. Morgan, and and just a handful of other uh, use cases. Uh, we started looking to public blockchain because it became clear that that's where the innovation was, and that's where people were moving this whole uh, ecosystem and and vision forward. So. We knew we knew we had something to offer that with Pact, but then uh, features in Pact actually suggested some of the because Pact was designed to take advantage of trustless transfers in proof of work. So that led us to consider: well, how could we expand the network to incorporate other chains? Originally, the idea was maybe to actually directly incorporate Bitcoin, um, and that's always a possibility too: is that we could is that we can incorporate other application layers, other uh, consensus. But we, we went with the uniform model with the idea that um, the ideas that we had brought to private chain would make um, uh, would make public blockchain something that traditional businesses, especially ones that need to scale, like banks, my background is in trading technology, so you know they need tremendous scale, um, that this would offer something that they would recognize as a, as a scalable architecture that can support them no matter how far along down, how, how far they go on their journey. Um, but honestly, we were a little early with that vision. Um, so the biggest change, uh, at least from Cadena's point of view, is the institutional adoption of public chain that happened in 2024 uh, with BlackRock and Biddle and Franklin Templeton and all that. That really validated the vision we've had ever since we started, which is that public chain uh, offers a way for uh, traditional finance to actually expand, reach new markets, uh, work with the decentralized community, and um, and really you know transform the way people, uh, normal people, you know non financial people can interact with finance because that's where this is all headed. Is that uh, blockchain is really tearing down the barriers for individuals to directly involve themselves in markets, and that's what we've 
been working towards this whole time. And so for so for me, the biggest change is that those two come together. And, and in fact, that's a big reason why we did EVM as well, is one, obviously, you know, uh, becoming part of this amazing developer community is uh, tremendous and really wonderful. But it also signals to the business community that we're serious about standards and we're serious about participating in industry efforts to move this forward. So uh, both the ecosystem side and our lab side, which is the institutional side, are are now moving at light speed to make to bring these new use cases in tokenization and RWA on chain. Um, I want to ask a question related to, uh, we're talking about companies, enterprises, but maybe a little, can we talk a little bit about government? Like, how do you think, I feel like um, a lot of blockchains or companies, they try to get really close to every government in, in their own countries. But how do you think like uh, the American government is trying to contribute in this uh, massive blockchain adoption? So I seen like, uh, okay, they were in, like, I'm, I don't want to go to like in crypto, especially in crypto, but I'm talking about more technology or like uh, massive adoption. Well, I mean, just zooming in on crypto just for a second, I mean, we are a U.S. company. We founded in 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 New York, uh, technically Connecticut, um, uh, well, in 2016. And then we didn't uh, do the thing where we made like a Cayman structure or a Switzerland structure uh, to, to, for our foundation, uh, which is something that for many years, frankly, seemed like a huge mistake. Um, and once we did it, and once the tokens were issued, there's there's really no way to switch to a to a, a to a Cayman structure. And so for the longest, and it really, uh, it's one of the reasons why you know it's been you know it's taken us a little while to get where we are today, is because we couldn't be as aggressive uh, about some of the you know about how we could work with our token. Uh, basically, we self regulated and took a very very conservative approach. Um, also just to main, remain attractive to the JP Morgans and business. Like it was very important to us that we don't look like we're about speculation, that we look like we're about serious business, about providing a platform. Um, but frankly, it hampered us. It just, you know, because it was unreasonable uh, trying to exist as a crypto company in the United States. Um, we had problems with bank accounts. We had problems with, I mean, it was just the kind of, I mean, even as a founder, you know, it was, unnerving to know that the SEC could come after us at any time. So that has completely changed. And now people are excited about the fact that you have a company that's running in the United States. And while, you know, you can say that the current administration and, you know, certainly the current administration is behind a lot of this, uh, the legislation isn't quite there yet, but it's coming. And it's when that legislation is in place that that's when the, that's when the brakes really come off. Uh, but that's, I think, you know, uh, the Bitcoin ETF was obviously a big, uh, so I would say, you know, the, the combination of those things made it that, uh, that United States has become a very exciting place to do crypto. So, uh, we were at G we've been participating in GBBC, which was the conference, uh, just last week, I believe two weeks ago in Washington. Um, but we don't, um, uh, we're we're more there just as thought leaders and and to provide uh, input. We're not yeah we're actually not that focused on on you know getting heavy into government use cases and policy just yet. Uh, again, because that stuff moves kind of slow. Um, we want to prove the use cases on public chain for serious business today, and that will show government uh, you know the the right way forward in terms of like what is actually secure. Because at the end of the day, if things aren't scalable, they're actually not usable for governments either. Like yeah. you need to have a predictable environment to transact. And that's what we're trying to offer. Amazing. Thank you so much about the question. And also like, uh, well, just to end this, uh, end this like, uh, I want to talk a little bit more about the grants. Uh, right. You said like uh, you get like you got like a fifty million grant program. I want to know like what kind of uh, builders can I mean you're aiming for? Um, where exactly? Maybe you can tell us in which countries and so which areas and regions you're trying to focus. Yeah, so the the fifty million grant is both for the test net. Uh, it's also for our RWA programs as well, and and things involving tokenization, and so. Uh, to a certain extent, it breaks up on use case in the sense that um, for stuff that's going to develop the ecosystem, especially on EVM, uh, that's something where we want to go to where 
uh, developers are passionate about our project. And some of that is where we have communities already. Like uh, we're just at uh, Istanbul Blockchain Week. Uh, and the Turkish community is very excited about blockchain. So that was great to like tell them about this new development, even though we saved the announcement for ETCC. Sure. Um, but we, you know, we, we told them something big was coming as far as that goes. Um, so, uh, but meanwhile, uh, you know, t uh, token 2049 is in, um, Singapore this year mm -hmm. and Singapore's for RWA and tokenization is a very important, uh, jurisdiction. Uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of good businesses there. So that's something that we're really looking forward to, uh, participating in. Uh, there's a lot of, a lot of the, a lot of the like Libera and some of these like other bank use cases for stable coins are launching in um, in Singapore. So I think that's a, that's a really exciting area to be in. Uh, we also, uh, but we also have made inroads into Latin America as well. Um, and, uh, some of that is around, uh, doing more kind of social stuff surrounding us, uh, uh, sports and football, uh, soccer. Um, but there's a lot of really passionate developers there. So it's going where the developers are and where they are passionate about what we're doing. And then it's going to those innovative jurisdictions where RWA and tokenization is moving forward. Uh, are you planning to go to DevConnect? Is going to be this year in Argentina. Oh, right, right. Yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. For sure. Yeah, we'll be there. Well, thank you so much for the interview. Uh, it's a pleasure having you here. And we'll have a nice journey in ETC. For